This Migs and Meds University video series is supported by Senophthalmics and Bausch & Lomb. What is Visolta, or Antanaprostine Bunod Ophthalmic Solution, 0.024%? Where and how does it work in the eye? Why would I choose Visolta to treat my appropriate patient with opening glaucoma or ocular hypertension? What are the risks involved with using it? How do I use Visolta in my practice? Want to know what you need to know about Visolta or Lantanoprostine Bunod? Keep watching to get your answers. Hello, and welcome to the Eye Glaucoma YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Constance OKK, creator of Migs and Meds University, where we talk about the new, the old, the current, and pipeline medications that are used for treating glaucoma patients, as well as different medical management strategies for active implementation. So first up, what is Visolta? Visolta is the brand name for the drug Lantanoprostine Bunod Ophthalmic Solution, 0.024%. It was launched by Bausch & Lomb in 2017 and is the only FDA-approved IOP-lowering drug to combine a nitric oxide-releasing agent and a lantanoprost acid in one molecule. Visolta is indicated to reduce intraocular pressure in patients with open angle glaucoma or ocular hypertension, and studies suggest it can do so across the spectrum of elevated or normal to low IOP. Visolta is a unique dual action agent that works on both outflow pathways by targeting one, the trabecular meshwork, which accounts for 60 to 80% of the eye's outflow with nitric oxide, and two, the uveoscleral pathway with lantanoprost acid. Why is nitric oxide even important? While nitric oxide plays a key role in the regulation of IOP, studies have shown that there are significantly lower levels of nitric oxide markers in the eyes of patients with primary open angle glaucoma compared with normal eyes. This means this that nitric oxide deficiency may play a role in chronic trabecular contraction and elevated IOP. So why would I choose Visolta to treat my appropriate open angle glaucoma and ocular hypertensive patients? Well, two words come to my mind, efficacy and tolerability. In two pivotal phase three studies, Apollo and Lunar, once daily Visolta showed significantly greater IOP reduction versus BID Timolol maleate 0.5% at month three. In fact, with the mean baseline IOP of 26.01 millimeters of mercury, P reduction from baseline with Visolta was up to 9.1 millimeters of mercury in the Apollo study. Then in a long-term phase three study of Japanese patients with lower baseline IOP with a mean of 19.6 millimeters of mercury, Visolta demonstrated consistent IOP reduction over 52 weeks with up to a 26.3% mean reduction from baseline. Additionally, in a phase two dose ranging study, Visolta delivered significantly greater mean IOP reduction from baseline compared with Zalatan, 34.6% versus 29.8% respectively. Furthermore, 30% of patients experienced three or more additional points of IOP reduction with Visolta compared with Zalatan. Now, when it comes to tolerability, I feel Visolta really does stand out here. Only six out of 811 patients discontinued Visolta due to the ocular adverse events in the Apollo and Lunar Phase three trials. That is less than 1%. This kind of data is important to me because I'm always concerned about my patients discontinuing their treatment because of adverse events. So what do you need to know about the side effects? Well, the most common were contractival hyperemia, eye irritation, eye pain, ocular hyperemia, and installation site pain in order of occurrence. Historically, PGAs are commonly associated with hyperemia. However, in clinical trials, just 6% of patients experience conjunctival hyperemia with Visolta, and only 0.2% discontinued due to hyperemia. And again, this says to me that there is a strong evidence for the likelihood of tolerability. Also, one needs to think of Visolta like any PGA, with the potential for iris or periorbital tissue pigmentation, which can be permanent, and eyelash growth. It's important to take caution when there's a history of or active intraocular inflammation or when patients have active or known history of macular edema. Lastly, 
How do I use Visolta in my practice? There are several types of patients who could benefit from it, but I typically consider it with newly diagnosed open angle glaucoma or ocular hypertensive patients, whether the patient has a high IOP or an IOP within the normal range. I also use it for switchovers from other PGAs when looking for an alternative for patients who are not reaching their IOP targets. I also use it after SLT or MIGS to simplify the regimen but still have a positive effect on the TM pathway with nitric oxide. Overall, I feel that Visolta is a great first-line drug that is efficacious, well-tolerated, simple to use with once-nightly dosing, and unique with its impact on the trabecular meshwork through the nitric oxide component. In my opinion, it should really be in a class of its own because of the nitric oxide releasing component. It definitely deserves a place in our armamentarium in terms of its use with glaucoma patients who have such individual needs and goals. If you're watching and have never used Visolta, I challenge you to request samples from your Visolta rep and try it on the suggested patient types and see for yourself. Visolta Lantanoprostein Bunot Ophthalmic Solution 0.024% is indicated for the reduction of intraocular pressure in patients with open angle glaucoma or ocular hypertension. Important safety information. Increased pigmentation of the iris and periorbital tissue can occur. Iris pigmentation is likely to be permanent. Gradual changes to eyelashes including increased length, increased thickness, and number of eyelashes may occur. These changes are usually reversible upon treatment discontinuation. Use with caution in patients with a history of intraocular inflammation. Visolta should generally not be used in patients with active intraocular inflammation. Macular edema, including cystoid macular edema, has been reported during treatment with prostaglandin analogs. Use with caution in aphagic patients, in pseudophagic patients with a torn posterior lens capsule, or in patients with known risk factors for macular edema. There have been reports of bacterial keratitis associated with the use of multiple dose containers of topical ophthalmic products that were inadvertently contaminated by patients. Contact lenses should be removed prior to the administration of Visolta and may be reinserted 15 minutes after administration. Most common ocular adverse reactions with incidence of greater than 2% are conjunctival hyperemia, 6%, eye irritation, 4%, eye pain, 3%, and installation site pain, 2%. That's all for now. If you like what you watched, give me a thumbs up and share this MIGS and Meds University video with someone you know. Thanks for watching the iGlaucoma YouTube channel, a place where glaucoma innovation is made easy for eye care professionals.